When I was in Wyndham, I'm pretty sure it came from Broome. Sometimes if you'd run out, you know, you'd try and call like the hub, like Kananara and be like, oh, I really need this like one thing and they'll help you. Or when I was in Queensland working at Yarrabah, like our ISTAT machine broke. And that was the difference between transferring a lot of patients is being able to run that test and checking troponins and electrolytes. And so Cairns was like, all right, here, take our ISTAT machine for it temporarily till you get yours fixed. Yeah. Pretty important piece of equipment these days, isn't it? Yeah. Not just doing ops. With these remote places, you're going to come across some Indigenous communities and people who have lived out in the bush for a long time. Have you come across any superstitious or cultural differences or uh, healing powers that they want to use? I know I've like I have had seen one gentleman that used to come in all the time with a chronic condition and it wasn't something we could fix and he'd gone to specialists and they couldn't quite work out what it was and was sort of just at a point where everyone didn't know what to do and he went and tried um, like bush medicine and went and saw a witch doctor and tried down that pathway as well, which we were all just very supportive of him trying. What was wrong with him? Uh, he had lots of stomach pain um, and okay. it would come and go. And they never found out what was wrong with him? Mm. So no sort of really strange which doctoring type things come into the clinic? No, I think maybe when I work, I'm going to work in the APY land soon, so maybe I might um, see a little bit more. But I know they keep a lot of their cultural things a lot pri- more private as well, which is completely understandable. APY? APY lands. It's on the border of South Australia Territory and Western Australia. Okay, just in that little pocket there. Mm. It's so remote, isn't mm. it? What would be the nearest town if you had to ship somebody out? Uh, either Alice or Cooper PD. Oh, yeah. I'm good. Alice Springs has got a good hospital, hasn't it? They have a very good training program too if you just finished uni. To do a grad program, you mm. mean? Yeah, they're very good. You're studying post-grad, aren't you? Yes, in rural and remote. Nursing? Yes. Oh, where are you doing that through? Uh, Charles Stewart University. Okay. It's just all online, don't have to go any classes, and I've found so far there's no exams, it's just all assignments. Okay. And so they'll give you a scenario or a story and then you've got to solve the problem kind of thing? Kind of, yeah. The subjects I'm doing at the moment are more like advanced nursing practice and advanced health assessment. The next semester is more like emergency and rural and remote topics. So Fantastic. Mm. We need people like you out there. But, yeah, it's you got to enjoy it because you are in remote locations and it's not the same where you can just duck down to the shop or go get a coffee that you've been thinking about for ages <laughs> or that sort of thing. It's uh, the highlight of the week sometimes is just going to the bakery. Yeah. Mm. But that's, there's some beautiful places out and around Australia to go and work in. That's mm. the beauty. That's the thing is, like I said, I'd, I'd love to go back to Wyndham and all these places, but I just want to see other parts of Australia. Um, like I did two weeks in Mount Gambia in South Australia and it's a beautiful town. The staff there were beautiful and everything like that, but just so many other places I want to see. Yeah, that's right. The world's your oyster or yeah. Australia's your oyster. Right? So in your days off, what sort of things would you do besides your walking and camping and stuff? You, you're saying some days you have a clinic with five people that you've got to manage by yourself oh at work yeah sometimes yeah it can be it's feast or famine like some days you you get no one in I remember from one afternoon from like about two o'clock till seven had no one come in and obviously we'd had all day we'd already done all the restocking the ordering the place was tidy um so we're just sitting in the tea room talking and I went for a walk outside and came around the windows and they were all sitting there talking and I I don't know how they didn't see me. I walked past three or four windows, got to the fifth window where they were sitting and scared them through the window. What, you just yelled out or yeah, tap, tap? just yelled out and tapped the window. It freaks them out. Very entertaining for me. It keeps me entertained. <laughs> I love to do that. All. Oh, the timers when you do the COVID rat tests. Yeah. We used to set timers for 15 minutes when they were going to beep. So just before I'd go home on an afternoon shift or a night shift, I did it quite a few times, there'd be like six timers and I'd set them to beep. I like 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 65 minutes, all these stupid times, and then I'd hide them in really terrible places. <laughs> so they'd be going off and nobody could find them. Correct. And drive them nuts. Yeah, I did that quite a few times. They used to try and get me back, though. I remember once they did, and I was trying to f- walk around for a while finding them, but it's 
Definitely so, my favourite thing to do. That's right. That just keeps your morale up, doesn't it, when you can have a practical joke or play games or whatever on people. Yeah. And do you have a oops moment? Um, I remember one time when we were working, we weren't, me and my friend, we weren't working the next day. We were supposed to be off, so we are having a few wines and some of our friends had a little bit of fire. And we got a call at like midnight and they're like, oh, we need you guys just to come in and cover in the morning because we've been on call till now. We're not going to go home for like another hour. Can you just come in in the morning? We're like, yeah, sure. That's fine. <laughs> went to bed later than we should have. So I was very tired and hung over the next day, but we went to work and me and my friend are drinking a hydrolyte and we had him sitting on the bench and reviewing a patient or whatever. And the doctor comes in and goes, oh, give him, give him this hydrolyte. And she picks up our hydrolyte and goes and walks over to the patient. It's like, no, 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 we'll, we'll make her a separate one. That one's yeah. not for the patient. That's ours. <laughs> Don't you take my hydrolyte. <laughs> yeah. You could function properly though. Yes. Yeah. Another thing we did, we, we were, a few of us had like really, really, really dry, cracked, like I think mine were bleeding at one point. And we couldn't obviously go to the shop and just get like some lip balm or paraffin from it. And all we could find was this like old nipple cream. <laughs> but it was like, oh, where's, you got the nipple cream? Can I have some more for my lips? <laughs> well, they used to put on cracked nipples. So yeah. yeah. I'm going to say thank you so much for coming in. I know it's taken a bit of effort for you to get here today for me. I really appreciate that and coming and sharing your story. And hopefully other people get up there and think, you know what? I'd actually like to go and do some R&R. Definitely. Even just to. Out of the big cities. Out yeah. of the big cities counts as remote. Yep. Give it a go. Give it a go. See what the world's like outside there mm. and test your mettle. Mm. I've had friends that keep their permanent jobs and just take long service leave and then give it a go. And um, everywhere I go, I've nearly found every site I've worked at, I run into someone that I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a small world, but it it's a big world. It is. Walking into like Kananara at two o'clock in the morning, like, oh, I know you. <laughs> When did, when did you get here? You're from Queensland. It's good, isn't it? Mm. It's a community out there. Mm. Well, I hope you keep up the go- good work and that you end up finding that location that you want to spend more time in mm. and your little house. It's really good. Good stories. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Nurses. To find more episodes, head to iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. If you are a nurse with a story to share, send us an email at nurses at barefootmedia.co.